if you're out there and you're studying and you know you feel nervous about taking the exam let me be a testament that it's going to be okay study the material study as much as you can when i first got that message saying that you didn't pass i'm like oh this shit sucks What's going on YouTube? Uh, I want to go into how I just failed the Security Plus 701 exam. Um, this isn't the video that I thought I was going to make. I thought I was going to get on here and tell you guys how I passed the 701 CompTIA exam, but that's not the case. I just got done taking it uh, probably like an hour ago and I scored a 692 and you are supposed to get a at least a 750 to pass so getting a 750 or greater is passing anything below that is failing and like i said i got a 692 so i was almost there to be honest with you it sucks feeling like you know you failed an exam when you thought you prepared for it you know it's definitely not a good feeling but just to go into a little bit of detail of my experience taking the exam what i did to prepare and you know, trying to figure out what I can do to um, be ready to take it again is you know something that I'm going to figure out. And I'm a visual learner, and I'm also an audio learner. So uh, you know, reading a textbook for me and reading notes is, is not going to resonate with me. I need to be able to you know do practice exams, watch videos, and listen to an audio. So you know, I started studying probably in. February, which to some of you guys may feel like a long time, and there's plenty enough time to study and prepare for it. But I didn't really start studying consistently until maybe mid-March. And when I say studying, that's listening to the audio, watching the videos every single day. I started taking practice exams maybe two weeks prior. It definitely sucks. And I just want to get on here in real time. Like I said, I just took it an hour ago and give you my reaction. It's very nerve wracking, you know, when you hit that submit button, you know, thinking that, hey, you know, I probably could have changed some answers or what I put on there, is it good enough? Getting that uh, score saying that you didn't pass or getting that message saying that you didn't pass, you know, it, it, it sucks. I felt confident enough to know that, you know, I could barely pass, but I knew I was close, right? So scoring a 692, that to me is, you know, I'm almost there, I'm almost there. So just to go into a little detail of my experience while taking the exam, I've got 77 questions. You can get up to 90 questions, but I got 77 on my exam. I got two performance-based questions, which were, which were very, uh, they were very intense. One question was configuring a firewall. The second one, was identifying a particular attack and associating it with a resolution for it. And I wanna say I, that was about, I think I got nine or 10 of those. So it was one question, but I had to answer in that within that one question, like 10 different scenarios. So just keep in mind, you know, you can get, I wanna say up to five performance-based questions, but for my exam, I only got two. I did skip those when I first started the exam and I went straight to the multiple choice questions. The multiple choice questions that I got, you know, they some of them were familiar on what I did on the practice exam. So I knew what to answer right away. Some of them were kind of, you know, you, you'll have to choose between two answers, right? And one could be very similar to the other answer and you have to pick the best answer. And to be honest, if you don't, know exactly what the question is asking you can kind of get stuck between two answers and then you're you know guessing which one you know will be the appropriate answer also within the exam you can flag different questions so if you're not sure about it you can flag it and go back and answer it i did do that i want to say i flagged maybe like 10 or 11 questions and i went back reread them and answered those the only downside about taking the comp exam is you submit the exam, right? And you didn't pass. They don't give you any results of this is what you got wrong. I want to say they'll give you like the, the objectives. When I submitted my exam, 
I uh, answered some more questions that were based on just, you know, feedback. And then after you're done with the feedback questions, you get your results of if you passed or if you failed. So after I received that message of me failing, I was thinking that I was going to get, you know, another message saying like, here are all the questions that you got wrong. It just went straight to, you know, it, it ended. Yeah, I just wanted to get on here and, you know, make this video. Hopefully, you know, this can help other people who are preparing for the exam. And, uh, you know, I also deal with test anxiety. I've been dealing with test anxiety ever since college, even though, you know, I have my college degree. Like, you know, it's, it's nerve wracking taking the test for me. And I'm always second guessing myself on the answers. Like I, I need to be confident in knowing my answers and I know the information. So anybody, you know, out there who has test anxiety, you're not alone. You know, I deal with it sometimes as well. And I won't say that, you know, I had bad test anxiety going into the exam, because like I said, I did study, you know, as much as I could. But, you know, I was, you know, nervous a little bit going into taking the exam. You know, just be aware of, you know, different scenario based questions and, you know, understanding the material to a T, right? There are going to be certain things on the exam that two answers may be similar or may even, you know, may be the right answer for the question, but you have to make sure that you read the question thoroughly and also know like, okay, this is the exact answer. You know, if you're stuck with guessing, you know, that's, that's kind of a disadvantage. That means you need to go back and study. So clockwork, being able to answer some clockwork, just like that. This is definitely a learning experience. I am not a stranger to failing and getting back up, dusting myself off and doing what I need to do. So that's exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to go back, study some more, study the things that I need to study. Now that I know, and, and this is kind of the plus side of failing the exam, right? Which like I said, it's very unfortunate. I wish I, know, I wish I didn't have to take it again, but the plus side of taking the exam and preparing and failing and getting ready to take, take it again is you know now what it feels like. You know the type of questions or you get the vibe of what the test is gonna be. You get an understanding of, okay, these are the type of questions. This is the right verbiage. This is the way they're gonna ask these questions. And you can go in more confidently. So if this is your first time and you were super nervous about taking the exam and it didn't work out your way, now you can learn from that go into the next exam super confident because you already know what to expect. You already know what to expect in the exam now. If you're out there and you're studying and you know you feel nervous about taking the exam, let me be a testament that it's gonna be okay. Study the material, study as much as you can. Also, anybody that has failed and is getting ready to prepare to take the exam again, you're not alone. I'm right there with you guys and we're all going to get through this. We're all going to pass the exam because we want more money and we want to be able to uh, excel in our careers in cybersecurity. This is my first cybersecurity certification that I'm trying to get and I really want to get it. Don't let it get to you. Keep practicing the study questions. Keep studying consistently every single day until you really understand the material. I think, you know, I'm just being tested on, like, do I really want this? And I'm going to go back study the material over and over again until it's embedded in my head and we're going to pass we're going to pass um yeah you know it, like i said it, it definitely sucks you know feeling like you prepare the best you can and then you fail the exam but keep trying keep trying i do want to say that um at, if you fail the exam right you can go ahead and schedule for the next exam you still have to pay for it but you can go ahead you don't have to wait for a period of time you can go ahead and book your next exam and i think the third time i think you have to wait 14 days to book it a third time but we're not going to do a third time we're going to pass the second time so yeah you know it, it it's a bad feeling man it, it i'm kind of over it now but when i first got that message saying that you didn't pass i'm like oh this shit sucks <laughs> this shit sucks and 
knowing that, you know, I got close to a 750 gives me confidence knowing that, okay, I'm almost there. And this is just another testament of my journey, right? When you fail, you know, you're either going to lay down and accept it or you're going to get back up. And I have to prove to myself that I'm going to pass this exam. If you fail, it's okay. You're going to get the certification. Just study as much as you can, eliminate all distractions, grind it out, get to it, book that next exam, and you're going to pass. This is Mitsuli G signing out. Mike G, see you on the next video.